I'll start by just giving you a little bit of background about myself, and then I'm going to read an excerpt from my novel, Adam. Basically, I started out doing comics, autobiographical comics in high school. So I wrote a series sort of documenting my life in high school. So every summer, I'd write about the year previous. So after my freshman year, I wrote a book called Awkward. After my sophomore year, I wrote a book called Definition. After my junior year, I wrote a book called Potential. And then my senior year was Likewise. And the book sort of kept getting longer and longer and taking more time. And I got more obsessed with the drawing. So the last book ended up taking me 10 years to finish. So I basically spent like 15 years thinking obsessively about my high school years. It's not something I necessarily recommend. But it was a fun project. And after that, I moved into writing for television for a while. I wrote for The L Word and then for this show called How to Make It in America. Although you guys might know of it because this is fashion school. So. Um, and that was about two aspiring fashion. They wanted to make jeans, actually. Two dudes that wanted to make jeans. Um, it's a fun show. And uh, really loved writing for TV and also wrote a screenplay based on my junior year comic potential that is still in development right now. And then I wanted to move on to try writing a novel. I'd always, I loved reading novels. I'd always wanted to write one. And I thought about, you know, what I wanted to write about. And my comics sort of covered my life in, in high school. And for the novel, I wanted to try talking about the world of my early 20s, which was in sort of, I had moved to New York by then. I grew up in Berkeley, California. Uh, so I sort of wanted to write about uh, the scene that I was in in the early 2000s, in my early 20s, which was this sort of lesbian and trans subculture in the sort of yes, East Philly still here. But in five minutes, he'd be talking to Redhead. And what could they do then? Adam rotated his head a slow 180 degrees, scanning the party for the Redhead like a superhero with infrared head vision. <laughs> he spotted her, standing by the window, talking to some girl. He imagined his vision like in Terminator 2, targeting in on her, giving him all the necessary stats. Everything was coated in fluorescent green. He was moving in. Nothing could stop him. He started walking toward the window, took another swig of vodka. But how? How would he get her attention? What do they do in the movies, on TV? They're walking down the school hallway. They bump into each other. The girl drops her books, and the boy picks them up, something like that. He was getting closer, two inches away. Decision, decision, alarms were going off. He had to act now, now! Adam threw his drink on the redhead. <laughs> redhead and her friends stared at him. Redhead slowly started to brush the vodka and ice off her shirt. Adam stood there and watched. Um, she said, Adam broke into action. I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, he said. He looked around and saw a stack of colored napkins on the liquor table. He ran over, grabbed a handful, ran back, and handed them to Redhead. I am so, so sorry. Why did you... I, um, I tripped. It was this rug. I... You didn't trip, said the friend. You just walked over here and you were running her. So, yeah, I'm happy to talk about anything, the book, writing, publishing, whatever you guys are interested in. Yeah. So like when you come up with an idea like for this, yeah. do you like do you like plan out your book and like plot it out and just like write? Basically, what I did for this novel and what I would mainly do. I mean, the biggest difference between the novel and the autobiographical comics was that with the comics, of course, I had an idea of what was going to happen because I had lived yeah. it. But for both of the books, I started with like a rough outline, so maybe just like a page, sort of basically plotting out. But I tried not to get too specific with it because. As you start writing, it obviously really starts to change. And my actual original idea for the novel was that Adam would go to New York, visit his sister, sort of realize that she was part of this whole subculture, and then go back to the Bay Area and join that subculture in San Francisco, because the sort of lesbian trans subculture in San Francisco sort of parallels the one in New York in the early 2000s, at least. Uh, but then it was just got too complicated, and I felt like it made a lot more sense of the whole book was contained within one summer. So as I was maybe like 30% through, I was like, no, 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 he needs to stay here. And so sort of things would change as I was writing it. And maybe like halfway through, I sort of realized what I wanted one of the end scenes to be. So I found myself kind of working towards that. But uh, definitely along the way, stuff that I thought I was going to write about got tossed out. And new stuff just in the moment of typing came up. Yeah. Um, even though this is like your first fiction novel, um, 
what experiences did you draw from like your own personal life? Yeah, so it's definitely, you know, obviously I'm not a straight teenage boy, uh, so that was probably the biggest difference. Um, and I was, you know, but the world that he enters is very much the world that I lived in in my early 20s and the early 2000s. So all the characters he meets, while they're not based specifically on real people, um, they sort of paint a portrait of that world. and. Uh, so Adam, you know, he goes to a club called The Hole. I went to a club called The Hole. He, went, he goes to like gay marriage rallies. I went to gay marriage rallies. He ends up going to a uh, sex play party that I went to. He ends up going to um, Camp Trans, which is this protest against the Michigan Women's Music Festival, which I went to. So sort of all the places he's in are spaces that I inhabited and he interacts with the types of people that I interacted with. So in that sense, it is very autobiographical, but I sort of had to reimagine re those scenes through these kind of through this naive perspective, which was really fun because it allowed me to sort of describe the scenes more bluntly and kind of be able to announce the types of prejudices that I think people might bring to those scenes through my main character. And I think when you can kind of put prejudices out on the table, it's a, a it's it's almost a quicker way to address them than through the perspectives of somebody embedded in that scene. Yeah. How do you feel about the idea of one of your comics being made into a movie? Like if, because you said that you've written a script, mm -hmm. do you think it would be strange to see your life portrayed <laughs> in front of people like that? By an extremely attractive person that I've never seen a lot of. That's horrible. Yeah. Like there's always that thing where like, you see like the actor and then like the person her face is on. <laughs> just a difference going on. Um, no, I think it's really exciting. I mean, it's been interesting. I'm so I'm now I, I a new director just came on for the screenplay, and so he now has a bunch of notes, and I'm sort of rewriting the screenplay to kind of cater to his vision. Um, and so I'm just I was just working on it this morning actually, and the interesting thing about it is that. It's a hybrid of live action and animation. So most of it is live action, but there are scenes where you sort of see through the character's eyes and the way she views the world is animated. But whereas in the comic, everything is cartoon and that's just the world that it lives in, the animation has to serve an additional function in the movie. Like it doesn't make sense to just see a very naturalistic animation that isn't differentiated from the live action because then you're just like, well, why is this changing? So it has to become more heightened and more exaggerated in a way that is very different from the comic. So that's been interesting to sort of figure out what that balance is. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think it, I, I really like this director. He, his name is Matt Wolf. He worked on a movie called Teenage, which was sort of a hybrid documentary narrative. Um, that, like I was saying, how I collected all the materials, um, tape recording, diary, photographs, I feel like he's going to incorporate that aesthetic into the movie, so I think it should be pretty cool. It's awesome. Yeah. The, the classic question that writers get asked is, do you write every day? And that kind yeah. of thing, like about your routine, and I feel compelled to say ask something like that, because yeah. I'm in a club. But I'm just curious, in your case, um, yes, what is your process in terms of like just creative stuff that you just do on your own? And how much of it is writing and how much of it would be drawing? Yeah. I mean, it really just depends on what project I'm working on. I would say that I definitely work on some form of writing or drawing every day. Sometimes it's my own stuff, sometimes it's work for hire. Uh, most recently, I ghost wrote a memoir, and that was a very rushed job. So I had to, you know, both research and interview the subject and write the like 250 page book in a span of four months. And so I really wow. was not able to do anything except like be hunkered over the computer, either transcribing interviews or typing up the manuscript. Then when I was done with that, you know, I was like, wanted to go back to drawings, like missed drawing in, in that time. And so I focused on that for a while. Uh, but it really just depends on you know, whether I need to do something for money or whether I have the freedom to focus on something creative. I'm out of time, but I just wondered if you could just talk a little bit about the subject matter and like 
you originally were writing about literally your own experience. Yeah. And then you were talking about how Adam was based a lot on your experience. Yeah. And do you feel like um, you're going to be typecast in a certain you know type of subject, or how do you feel about that? I mean, do you feel there's an activist side to yeah. what you do? I mean, I am. You know, I definitely most of the things I've written have had queer themes, and I think that that definitely gets you know. When people will write about it or talk about me, I think that, that there's that association, mm -hmm. um, you know. But I think the most important thing is you have to write about what interests you, and mm -hmm. that interests me. And I think that to sort of shy away from something from your interests because you're scared of being pigeonholed or you want to break out into the mainstream. I mean, some people have even asked me like, if I wrote this book from the perspective of this, you know, straight cis white male, because I wanted it to be more mainstream, and I actually didn't. I mean, it was purely just because I had this concept that I wanted to explore. Um, I mean, it's such a queer book, anyway. You <laughs> <laughs> must have read um, the book if they asked you that. Yeah, I mean, so basically, you know, I would say, like, yeah, that's always going to happen, and there's always going to be people that are going to see something and say, like, oh, that's queer, I'm straight, that's not for me. And that's just, you know, that's just too bad for them. Like, I think that, and which is not to say that I'll always be interested in, in queer stuff. I don't know, maybe in five years I'll want to write some fantasy novel about dragons. Like, I have no idea. <laughs> and that should be great, too. You know, there shouldn't, you shouldn't hold yourself back for anything for any reason. Just follow, follow your own obsessions. Like, whatever you find yourself thinking about, the questions you have in your mind, the things that you're trying to figure out, is what you should write about. Well, Ariel, thank you so yeah, much. Thanks for having me.